Dear learners, I am going to briefly talk about the supply chain or the value chain of petroleum and we will end with a typical oil and gas field life cycle. Right. Now, the oil that we produce from the field, can we directly use it in our fuel stations, in our petrol pumps, in our cars? No there is a process called refining process, which is done by the refineries located all around India to convert that oil that we produce from the subsurface, which we call the crude oil and refine it to produce the other byproducts from that crude oil. Now, this process is nothing but a big distillation process. If you have ever traveled along a refinery, you would see these big towers within that refinery. Those towers are nothing but the distillation towers, where the crude oil is exposed to temperature, high temperature. At a different temperature, it releases different kind of products. At the lowest temperature, you can see we have the LPG or the liquefied petroleum gas, which we all use in our houses to cook. As the temperature increases, we have gasoline, we have petrol, we have diesel and even we have the tar that we use for laying our roads that also comes for from petroleum. And this separation happens in the refineries. In India, all the major oil companies like ONGC, Oil India, Bharat Petroleum, Hindustan Petroleum, Reliance have their refineries placed all over India. Whatever we produce goes to those refineries they distill and distill the hydrocarbon and many more products come out of that distillation and then that goes into the fuel stations or at our homes where we use the final product. Let us talk about the value chain or the supply chain of petroleum industry. We find hydrocarbon in the subsurface. What process does it goes through? to evacuate that hydrocarbon from the subsurface and bring it to the fuel stations or the petrol pumps. The first part of this is called the upstream petroleum industry. What do we do here? This is where we actually locate or find hydrocarbon, we explore for hydrocarbon and once we find the hydrocarbon, we put up infrastructure, drill wells to take out that hydrocarbon from subsurface to the ground. This portion of the petroleum industry is known as the upstream part. Now, once that hydrocarbon is on ground, that hydrocarbon needs to be transferred to either storages or to refineries. Now, if that field is located in a very remote area, then it can be transferred through pipelines or if it is accessible by road, we can use tankers. If it is in the ocean, we can use oil tankers or big ships that carry oil. This portion of transporting oil from the field to the refineries is known as the midstream part of the petroleum industry. And the final part where the refining happen as I showed you in the previous slide and then it gets transferred to the retail outlets like the petrol pumps and other places where we as end user use the product is known as the downstream part of the petroleum industry. We as geologists or technical people are mostly involved in the upstream part of the petroleum industry. Let me finish this talk by showing you a typical life cycle of a oil and gas field. Now, this is a very busy slide with lot of information there, but I would like you to focus on the lower part first. A petroleum 
or oil field from beginning when we find the oil field or start exploring for the oil field till the end can be divided into broad five phases in its life. The first part is where we start looking for hydrocarbon. This is called the exploration phase. What do we do here? We collect lot of data. We collect seismic surveys, we collect geochemical surveys, we do data analysis, we do interpretation of the data, we look at the tectonic environment, we look at the regional geology to understand if a certain part of the world can have hydrocarbon or not. If we find indication that yes, there could be hydrocarbon, then the next thing we do is to drill a hole or drill a well there to actually see if there is hydrocarbon present in the subsurface or not. This phase is called the exploration phase, which typically lasts between 3 to 5 years. Then if we find that there is hydrocarbon presence in that area, we go to the next phase which is called the appraisal phase. Now what do we do in appraisal phase? We collect even more data but this time it is lot more focused data. We have found hydrocarbon in an area, but we are yet to determine how big that hydrocarbon pool is, right? because that will give us an indication how much we can produce from that. Appraisal phase is dedicated to study that. So, you take all kinds of sample, you take log data, core data and understand and drill some more wells also to understand the extent of that field, to understand how much petroleum volume is there so that you can define reserves. And finally, because reserves has a commerciality term also involved, we need to come up with a field development plan which will chalk out a path how we are going to exploit that hydrocarbon, how many wells we are going to drill what is it is going to cost and that is all recorded or presented in field development plan which is a document then we submit to the regulatory body of the country for approval. Once they approve, we move on to the next phase which is called the field development phase. In this phase, our main target is to drill many more wells and set up infrastructure so that we can start producing the oil from the pool. And so we move to the production phase which continues for a long time in the field's life. In this time from development to production our focus changes to sustaining production. In the initial part the focus is on data collection, understanding the data, analyzing the data so that we can determine the size of the pool. In the second part of the field dive, our focus moves into sustaining production so that we can produce the field for a long period of time. Towards the end, because petroleum as I mentioned is a naturally occurring substance and it is not replenishable, so at one point we will actually exhaust the reservoir from the oil and gas it had. At that point, the field goes into a natural decline and at that point, we need to plan to abandon the field safely so that there is no environmental accident that happens due to that field. That is called the last phase of the oil and gas which is called the abandonment phase. Now, with this understanding, let us look at the top graph. This graph on the vertical axis I have plotted the oil production and on the horizontal axis I have plotted the time in years. So, what you see the first production comes when we drill or hit the first discovery well and we find oil and gas. There is a tiny amount of production because we need to see whether that oil and gas that we have found underground is recoverable or not. Once we move on to the appraisal phase, we drill more wells, we take more data, we produce some more oil and that brings to the second small peak that you see which is related to the appraisal success. Post appraisal is the field development plan 
where the field development plan gets approved by the regulatory authority and we move on to the development and production phase. This is the time where we drill many more wells in the field to exploit or evacuate that oil and that is how you see the large increase in production. It reaches the peak production and it stays there which we call the plateau production level. And towards the end life of the field as we have used all our technology to produce as much from that field possible, the field goes into natural decline as the oil and gas from the reservoir get exhausted and that is how the oil rate slowly goes down and after that we come to the end of the life cycle. So, this represents a typical life cycle of oil and gas field. So, let me summarize now what we have learned in this part. So, in this part we have talked about the petroleum industry supply chain, how we get the oil from underground to the fuel stations and we finished up with a typical life cycle of oil and gas field. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.